So this is a freshwater mussel. This is in the phylum Mollusca in the class Bivalvia. So Bivalvia means uh, two valve. Valve referring to, of course, um, these hard shells on the um, exterior of the animal. This is uh, basically an external skeleton. Um, so I'm going to start off basically first just with uh, showing you how to orient yourself on the animal. It's not very intuitive. There's no obvious head or or legs or anything like that. So um, the first thing you want to look for is this um, slightly swollen area here. This is um, a bit of a, a hard hump off to one side and that's called the umbo. And the umbo is the youngest uh, part of the shell. So, or sorry, the oldest part of the shell. The youngest part of the shell is down here. And you can see these nice little um, growth rings on the surface of the shell here. Um, maybe a little bit better on this side. So each year a new uh, layer of growth is added down at this side, okay? So here's the umbo. Um, so as I said, um, you'll notice it's not quite uh, center of the animal. So this shorter side um, in front of the umbo, that's the anterior side of the animal, which means that this longer side here is the posterior side of the animal. And um, the other thing I'll point out while we're looking up at this surface here is this um, this sort of rough looking structure, a bit of it is peeled off. Um, this is the hinge ligament, okay, the hinge ligament, and this is what's responsible uh, for letting the clamshells um, open. So it's, it's, it's very elastic and there are actually muscles inside the animal that we'll see later that are holding the, um, the valves closed, otherwise uh, the spring ligament would allow things to, to pop right open. So this surface that contains the hinge ligament and the umbo is the dorsal surface, okay? So the other side um, where the clam actually can open, doesn't want to open right now, this is the ventral side down here, okay? So if we go back, so we have anterior, posterior, dorsal, and ventral, okay? So now if you um, face the muscle away from yourself so that its anterior side is facing away from you and the posterior side is facing toward you, um, that will help you discern left and right. So we have anterior, posterior, dorsal, dorsal side up. So that tells us that this is the left side and this is the right side. Okay. So that's how to um, orient yourself on the bivalve, when we do the dissection, we're going to lay it right side down and we'll be removing the left valve and mantle. Stay tuned. Okay, so I just successfully uh, opened up the bivalve shell and I did that by making two incisions, one on the inside of basically the margin on either end of the animal and I did that in order to um, basically dislodge the two large muscles that are mainly responsible for keeping the valves closed and those are the adductor muscles. You can see one right here, very large, and there's another one on this side here, also quite large. So this is the anterior and posterior adductor muscles which keep the animal closed. So you can see now how the hinge ligament here is allowing uh, the valves to spring open. So I just wanted to show you a few features of the inside of the shell. Um, you can see that it has this nice pearly sheen to it, that mother of pearl uh, rainbow colored sheen. Uh, that is uh, one of the three layers of the bivalve shell, and that's called the nacreous layer, okay? All the layers of the shell, they're made out of different things, proteins and calciums. Uh, they're all secreted by this uh, very thin membrane called the mantle. And the mantle uh, uh, can be found on both sides of the valves, on both valves, and I actually had to dislodge it from this left valve in order, um, in order to expose the surface of the valve here, the inner surface. And if you look closely, you can see a, a line running right here, okay, that's called the paleal line, and that is actually um, scar tissue essentially, and that shows you where the mantle was attached, and part of the mantle this is the mantle down here. You can see this thin layer right here that was attached to this upper valve. And this um, darker section here, if you were to feel it, you would actually notice that it has a fairly firm texture. Okay, that's the paleal muscle. So that's a muscular uh, tissue that was attached here and that 
helps also sort of keep the whole thing together. The other sort of uh, scars that you can see on the, um, the shell on the interior, there's a large scar right here. Um, there's another scar over here and it actually still has a bit of tissue attached. So the scars underneath, um, there's another small one here. Um, those are our muscle scars. So um, whether it's a bivalve shell or the bones of a vertebrate, um, you can actually see um, basically where muscles had attached at one point. So those are the muscle, muscle scars from the adductor muscles. And we'll get to the rest of the internal anatomy in a moment. So now we'll look in the mantle cavity, which is basically just the body cavity. The first thing that we'll notice are these long, uh, dark colored, quite conspicuous, uh, very thin, feathery looking um, gills. So this is the surface of gas exchange. Uh, water enters into the mental ca cavity via a in-current siphon. So there's a little siphon formed at the rear here um, by the mantle. Uh, gas exchange takes place and the waste products are then ejected via the X-current siphon also here at the posterior end. Um, and I'll just have you note that there's another set of gills on the underside as well, so along the right uh, the right valve, there's another pair of gills down there. So if we move these gills out of the way a little bit, see if I can move them up, um, you'll note that there's this large uh, pale mass here, okay, and there's actually two structures there that you'll see. The first is this lower structure here, it's a little bit darker colored, it's much firmer, it's a hard muscular structure called a foot. And this is responsible for locomotion, uh, for digging the animal down into its substrate uh, so that it can bury itself. So this is the foot. Attached to the foot is this much softer uh, structure here, and that's the visceral mass. And the visceral mass contains several things. If you were to open it up, you would see likely a greenish area of tissue. Um, that's the digestive gland, which is basically the liver. There's a small cavity, which is the stomach. Um, there's a large amount of brownish, uh, sort of pale beige tissue, which are the gonads, which are involved in uh, reproduction. And there also may be some coils of intestine visible in there as well. So those are all found in the visceral mass. So in terms of feeding, um, they do have a complete digestive system with both a mouth and an anus. So we can sort of look for the mouth by first locating this structure. This is called a labial palp. There's one on either side. It's just a thin flap of tissue. And if we follow that down right to the um, sort of attachment point here, that tells us approximately where the mouth is. So I'm just going to lift this up and have a look in here. And there you can hopefully see the cavity that forms the mouth. Okay, so the labial pal palps are sort of the entrance way to the mouth. I'll set that back down. So food enters through the mouth, um, it passes into the stomach, which is in the visceral mass, passes through uh, the intestines that are in the visceral mass, and then the intestines come up here to the dorsal surface of the animal, pass along the dorsal area here through the heart. Um, the heart is housed in this little area up here called the pericardial cavity. It's covered by a membrane, the pericardial membrane. And the intestine and the heart are in this space here. The intestine passes through the heart, carries on along the dorsal surface, and then eventually becomes the, um, the rectum and the anus through which waste is ejected. And I believe that's this dark material that we're seeing right here. Um, now we'll have a quick look at the uh, some of the larger muscles. So there's one very prominent muscle right here, this large sort of oval structure. And there's another muscle here, it's smaller, right about here. Okay, so this is the anterior and the posterior adductor muscles. And those muscles are responsible for holding the clam closed. Okay. Um, there are two other smaller muscles. There's one little guy right here on the posterior end. And then there's another one uh, right here, this light colored structure here. That's the anterior and the posterior foot retractor. So as the name implies, they are used to draw the foot back into the body after it's been, um, after it's been pushed out. There are other muscles responsible for pushing it out, but they're very difficult to see. So we won't be looking at those today.